Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Asi Peretz and today I'm going to be talking to you about the hair transplant black market and the reason I want to do this is to try help you make the best decision for your budget for your hair transplant and I, I hope that you do it in as safe way as possible and hopefully this helps you. So like anything when we're talking about black market hair transplants we need to start off with a definition. What is a black market hair transplant? Well according to the International Society of Hair Restoration Surgeons a black Black market hair transplant is a hair transplant whose major steps are delegated to a non-doctor. So things like follicular extractions or incision making. Now in my humble opinion this definition is a little bit strict because there are many world-class surgeons, very famous surgeons out there who do delegate follicular extractions to non-doctor technicians and they get wonderful results. Now in my practice because I'm a little bit of a control freak I do like to do my own extractions and of course my own channel creations but that doesn't mean that if your surgeon has delegated extractions to a technician that it is necessarily a black market hair transplant even though by definition of the International Society it is. Now obviously if your transplant is being done by a reputable doctor, doctor will be supervising the extractions pretty much at all times but he won't be necessarily doing it themselves and it's up to you whether you're comfortable with that or whether you want a doctor to actually extract every single follicle themselves. So for practical purposes I'm going to redefine what constitutes a black market hair transplant to try and make it simple and in my opinion a black market hair transplant is a hair transplant that is performed solely by non-physicians and that is your extractions, your incisions and your placements with no supervision to minimal supervision by a physician. Now let's go through them tier by tier so you could know if you're in the safe zone or in the danger zone. Now even though we call them black market transplants I know many many clinics in Turkey and around the world actually fit this description and unfortunately if you're on a tight budget most likely this is the type of hair transplant that you're going to receive. The quickest and easiest way to know is price range so usually these black market hair transplants range from 500 US dollars all the way to about four and a half thousand dollars and if your transplant costs that much I don't care where in the world it is most likely it will fall under one of my tiers of black market hair transplants. But are all black market hair transplants dangerous? Well not necessarily but what I can say is that pretty much universally at a black market hair transplant you're not going to get a result as natural as it can possibly be and I always like to use the following analogy. So let's say you're a person that walks five miles every single day to work and you've been doing this for years and years it's kind of a drag. Now somebody goes and gives you a 2010 Toyota Camry well you just might be ecstatic and very very happy for the rest of your days because guess what you don't have to walk anymore but if you want something a little bit more comfortable with a little bit more speed with a lot more safety that's going to last you longer well, you might have to pay a little bit extra to get that. So let's break down this black market so you can make an informed decision yourself. Now I have broken down into three tiers tier one tier two and tier three. The first two tiers I would highly advise you guys to avoid at all costs and let's hear exactly what they are. Let's talk about tier one. Now this is the real underground shit. This is where a lone agent okay, will find a technician that they know and maybe that they like their work and what this agent will do is gather leads from different sources like they'll run Facebook ads, Google ads, some social media, they might even go to local barber shops and make some connections and they'll find these patients okay and they will then refer the patients to this lone technician whether it's in their country generally it's in another country. So generally these technicians work at other clinics and they will take on these cases on a freelance basis because they can make a little bit more money for their day's work. Now why is this so dangerous? It's dangerous because a lot of these technicians don't really get paid that much at all probably up to about two maybe three hundred dollars for a full day's work. Now they have to also bring on the team bring the equipment and manage everything for that surgery. 
and usually it's not really a robust team so they'll bring two other technicians with them if you're lucky and sometimes if they're not available and i've seen this these technicians can bring family members who are not even trained at hair transplantation never mind medical personnel to help them perform this hair transplant so they try cut costs at every single corner they do things like reuse cutting instruments sterility is definitely not as good as it should be because they don't have access to high level sterilization equipment like autoclaves so things may just be cleaned in water and maybe put in some alcohol they then generally bring these patients to these moonlighting clinics and every day it will be a different clinic that they use whatever gives them a better rate and these clinics rent out pretty much an operating room for them where they have a surgical bed and they supply them with all the consumables necessary to carry out this hair transplant now with this type of hair transplant there is very low regulation so typically these places that they bring you to get operated on don't have even basic emergency equipment should something happen also as we said sterility is not going to be great also the very very small teams well you're certainly not going to get a natural result they're not going to be using microscopes they're not going to be cutting and trimming follicles and they may have very limited knowledge on how to accurately perform a hair transplant and then we get our tier two black market hair transplants and this i call the marketing experts it's pretty much where that one agent i was telling you about actually has some really good business acumen and he reinvests some of this money and really goes all out with PR and marketing. And some of these guys form clinics or clinical groups that if you look them up online, they've poured hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars into PR and marketing. They're published in very reputable publications and they have video exposés about them that make them look absolutely glamorous. They may even perform hair transplants on some of your favorite celebrities. Now, usually these tier two black market clinics are a little bit safer because they do get a little bit more regulated. So things like sterility will probably be okay. But still, you would probably be hard pressed to find a physician on the floor. And most of these clinics do tens of patients every single day just by employing a bunch of technicians. Now, a lot of people say to me, Doc, I have seen some amazing results from these clinics. Why shouldn't I go to one of them? And for this, I have two things to say. Number one, some of these clinics perform up to 100 surgeries per day. Now, even if 10% of them get some good regrowth, that's 10 pretty good before and afters they can post every single day. But what of the rest? What of the vast majority, the 90%? Now, every doctor has results that they're less than proud of. It happens to everyone. But what makes you good or bad is that if these results are in the minority and not the majority. So for every good result you see, you don't know how many botched cases they may have. And number two, even the so-called good results, if you had to really carefully inspect them, you would see that they only really look good in photos. And if you really look at the hairlines, they're kind of unnatural and don't actually look very good at all. And lastly, we get our tier three black market clinics. Now, these are generally clinics that are run by a doctor or a group of doctors. They'll typically always be a physician on the floor and the physician will typically consult you. They will probably draw your hairline as well. And sometimes if you pay extra, they might also create the channels for your hair transplant. These clinics still do tens of patients per day, but at least they are a lot more supervised and probably a safer place to go to. A lot of them will also have things like microscopes. So you may actually get a decent result potentially. The problem with these is even if they have things like microscopes and they do scan your donor area potentially, a lot of what they do is more for show and for marketing. Because at the end of the day, these surgeries are mainly technician run and no one is really supervising whether single hair follicles are properly trimmed and placed. Also, because they generally perform surgeries on tens of patients per day, a lot of their staff are moonlighting and you're never gonna know who's actually performing surgery on you which team it is is it the great team that did your favorite celebrity 
or is it someone new who has very little experience? But these tier three black market clinics are probably a lot safer than the first two tiers. So if honestly all you can afford is three, four thousand dollars, then rather go to one of those clinics. But always my recommendation is just save up and go to a reputable doctor who is an actual hair transplant surgeon. We have so many brilliant colleagues who are so passionate about the work in the field that they're really not that difficult to find. So I hope this helps you guys and if you have any questions please comment below. I'd love to do my best and try answer and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you do like this kind of content.